Water. Earth. Fire. Air. Welcome to Monster of the Week, the show where I find interesting creatures from D&D's past and bring them to light so you can drop them in your 5th edition game. Today I bring you yet another elemental, but not just any elemental. Today we're talking about the Omnimental, the king of elementals. In past videos I've talked about what happens when you combine more than one type of elemental energy and the creatures that result, such as the smoke elemental from fire and air, for example. The Omnimental is what you get when you combine all all elemental energies, earth, fire, water, air, and everything in between. This colossal creature comes to us from 3rd edition's Monster Manual 3, and it is nothing less than a force to be reckoned with. To behold this creature is to behold the elemental chaos itself. Its mere passing can be just calamitous to the landscape. The Omnimental literally reshapes the world in its wake. And in this episode of Monster of the Week, I'm not only going to show you what this thing can do in combat and give you some tips on how to use it in your game, but I'm going to present to you what is the most heavily altered creature out of any of the other creatures that I've done in this show so far. Now as you would expect, a creature of this size with this much power is going to have two just ridiculous slam attacks. Anyone who gets struck by this creature in melee is certainly going to feel it. In addition to the sheer damage caused by the Omnimental, I wanted to make this creature feel truly epic. I want our players to really just see it as this overwhelming force of nature when they're forced to go up against something like this. So what I did was I added added in a trait that actually comes from 3rd edition which was originally a feat called Awesome Blow. This ability forces any creature that is smaller than the Omnimental to make a strength save when it gets struck by one of its slam attacks. If the creature fails that strength save, it's not only knocked prone, but it also gets pushed 10 feet in a direction of the creature's choosing. This power isn't going to ruin lives by any means, but I think it gives us as DMs just another tool to really drive home how overwhelmingly powerful this creature is. Not to mention it gives the Omnimental just one more way that it can interact with the environment around it in combat, and it might be able to force the players into some positions they might not want to be in. The other primary means of attack that the Elemental can employ is an ability called Elemental Ball. And this ability is one of the most metal things I've ever seen a creature do. To use this ability, the Omnimental literally reaches into its body with its fist and tears out a coalescing ball of Elemental energy. It then hurls this projectile at the target, dealing bludgeoning, fire, and lightning damage to it. It's a very powerful move, however, there is a trade-off. In order for the Omnimental to use this ability, it must sacrifice 10 hit points because it's literally tearing out part of its body to do so. Honestly though, the Omnimental is built to have a lot of hit points, that's how it survives. It doesn't rely on a high armor class, so sacrificing a few hit points to deal more than double that amount of damage is going to be completely fine. Now what is quite possibly the most notorious trait of the Omnimental is what happens if you actually manage to slay one. See, the Omnimental doesn't merely just die when it drops to zero hit points, it begins to destabilize and split apart. As it breaks down into its core components, the four elemental energies that were once making up this Omnimental coalesce into four large elementals that are independent of each other. Not only does the party have to contend with this hulking Omnimental, but once they kill it through its death birth ability, that's what this is called by the way, which makes total sense, they now have to deal with a large earth elemental, an air elemental, a fire elemental, and a water elemental. Realistically, a party that is powerful enough to take down an Omnimental isn't going to have too much trouble dealing with these new enemies, however, it does run the risk of taking out one of their weakened party members if there's someone sticking around who's making death saves or that it just has a few hit points left. It is worth mentioning too that these elementals that form out of the Omnimental's death are not the same as the regular elementals you'll find in the monster manual. They're much larger and much more powerful. Since we don't have an official version of an upscaled elemental, I've simply done that conversion and added those stats to the conversion document and you can find them just underneath the Omnimental if you open it up in Google Docs. The other thing about this ability too though is it's just a really cool effect and I think it creates a very interesting narrative moment where you can just describe what's happening to your players. It's definitely going to be memorable. Now see, the Omnimental is a very interesting monster and I'm sure you're looking forward to hearing what else it can do, but unfortunately this is where the book kind of leaves us hanging. The Omnimental has so much potential to be awesome, but I feel like the book only really scratches the surface. 
Fortunately though, that's where we come in. The first thing that came to my mind when I was working on this conversion was, what happens if you cast an elemental spell into an Omnimental? I mean, sure it has resistance to fire, damage, cold, thunder, lightning, all that stuff, but what else could happen here? I feel like there's potential to do something with that. My solution to this problem was coming up with an ability that I call One With All Elements. This trait reads that anytime a source would deal fire, lightning, cold, or thunder damage to the Omnimental, you roll 1d10 on the table listed below. This table, of course, will be in the conversion document right underneath this power. I'll leave it to you to take a look at that and see all the things that can happen, but some of the things on there include giving the Omnimental temporary hit points, or increasing its speed for an amount of time, or giving it resistances. I even gave it the possibility of creating another smaller elemental out of its body depending on what kind of damage it takes. So say the party casts a fireball at the Omnimental, it just absorbs it, and then a round later it spits out a fire elemental as it's taken in too much energy. Honestly, I think the table that I came up with is a pretty good starting point, but feel free to add to that. There's no reason it can't be D12 or even a D20 if you can think of that many things that might happen if it takes in too much elemental energy. You could even add the option to this table to have other elementals like the para elementals or that fourth edition elementals come out of this creature when it takes elemental damage. Something like the chill fire destroyer or flame spiker might be an interesting addition to this encounter. This creature is meant to be a unique boss monster so don't feel bad about throwing in some crazy possibilities on that table. The other side of this coin too is once the party realizes what's happening when they're casting their fireballs or lightning bolts they're probably going to stop doing that, so you'll only at most get two or three of these abilities off in one battle. The other thing I felt was appropriate to add to this creature was the use of legendary actions. Now I can't blame the designers from 3rd edition for this one because we didn't have legendary actions back then. Basically big monsters like this just relied on getting like four attacks. But now that we do have legendary actions, I thought that was an avenue worth exploring a little bit. So what I did was I gave the Omnimental three legendary actions. The first one of these, which consumes one action, is called Lightning Storm. Essentially it allows the Omnimental to cast Lightning Bolt at all creatures that are within 60 feet around it. Now of course an ability like this does have a recharge time, but I figured it needed at least one good area of effect spell to deal with gangs of enemies that would swarm it. Especially considering how big it is, this is really going to affect quite a large area. The second legendary action, which consumes two actions, is called Create Elemental. As the name would suggest, it allows the Omnimental to take a part of its body, sacrificing a little bit of HP again, and create one of the elementals you would find in the monster manual. Essentially what this is doing is allowing the Omnimental to create its own minions for the battle, and those creatures, again, aren't going to be super detrimental to the party, but if they ignore them for long enough, it could become quite problematic. Lastly, I gave the Omnimental the ability to cast the spell Control Weather at the cost of three legendary actions. The only difference between this ability and the spell Control Weather is that instead of taking 1d4 times 10 minutes to take effect, the weather takes effect after 1d4 rounds, making it very relevant in combat. This, above all the other abilities, I feel is the most dangerous and most defining of my version of the Omnimental. For one, it just makes sense to me that a creature comprised of pure natural energy would be able to cast something like Control Weather. Again, it just builds on this narrative of this ancient powerful creature that is comprised of pure elemental energy. Secondly, it allows the Omnimental to create an environment in which its lightning bolt spells are just going to do so much damage. If it creates a thunderstorm above itself and then uses its lightning bolt storm ability the next turn, it's going to be a bad time. Lastly, something the spell is rarely used for is it can make the environment inhospitable for the players. It can make it colder and colder and colder every single round until eventually we're reaching arctic-like temperatures. This ability will put the players on a clock because once it starts shifting towards the arctic-like temperatures described by the spell, they know they only have so much time before they start taking debuffs and even potentially damage. Alternatively, if they're in a cold environment already, it could start making things hotter and hotter and hotter so that all of their winter wear is going to just become a hindrance rather than protection. It can add a real sense of urgency and drama to the fight, and even if it's going to take a dozen rounds before things get real bad, your players won't necessarily know that, they'll just see the slight shift every turn. So ultimately I didn't add anything too earth shattering to this creature, but I think just by giving it these few extra abilities and kind of changing the way we look at it, 
it can really make what is an interesting creature really, really awesome. So let's take a minute and talk about some ways you can use this creature in your game. One interesting use of this creature and how I've seen it used in the past is to have it be the creation of a cult or group of mad wizards. Obviously through experimentation with elementals, they've coalesced them all together into this just crazy abomination of elemental energy. This can make things interesting because if you have an encounter where some of these wizards are involved, even if they're low level, maybe they're casting lightning bolts and fireballs into the Omnimental, so they're not actually a threat on their own, but they're powering up this creature, so every turn it's getting bigger and bulkier, getting more hit points, summoning all their elementals, just all kinds of crazy stuff happening every turn. So the party then needs to kill them to stop the Omnimental and then actually deal with the creature itself. Another way I've seen this creature used in the past is to just basically have it going on a rampage through the countryside. Maybe it finds its way to the material plane through the elemental chaos, who knows how it got here, that could be up to you, but ultimately it just starts wreaking havoc on the natural world. At this point it becomes something kind of like the Tarrasque, except maybe not quite as crazy, but it's just this huge creature that roams through the countryside and everyone kind of knows about it and you can even see it off in the distance from certain mountaintops and that kind of thing. It's just this omnipresent force that you always feel weighing down in a certain area. That said, maybe the players don't even want to kill it. If you're running a low level campaign, you have this omnimental just part of your world. It very well could be a force of nature that is just to be avoided. Another way that I've considered using this creature, which I think is really interesting, but it requires a certain type of campaign, is to have it literally as an elemental noble or king. So again, I'd say this depends a lot on your world and how you choose to handle elementals, but if you are running a game in which elementals are sentient and they have their own societies in the other planes, then this can be a really interesting way to kind of bring something else out of that. I would propose a situation where an Omnimental has risen for the first time in millennia and has claimed himself as the king of all elementals. Maybe some elementals, perhaps very ancient ones, see this as a sign that the elemental planes are to be brought together and they join with his cause. But maybe some other elementals are not about that life and they do not want that to happen. Then basically you have this kind of elemental war being created where the one side is for unification of the planes and the other side is totally against that. That's just one way you could spin it. You could even have it so that this king of elementals kind of reigns supreme over the other planes and they all have their own kings or barons or however you want to put it, but they ultimately kneel to the primordial elemental, the omnimental. Getting a little bit off track here, but another thing that I've kind of thought of with this creature that could be interesting is to use the Omnimental as a patron for a warlock. I mean, that's kind of something that I'm working on right now is an elemental warlock, so to speak, that uses a primordial as its patron, but uh, stay tuned for that. Anyways, that's pretty much all I've got today on the Omnimental. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hopefully you liked listening to me talk about elementals. I don't know how many times I said the word elemental in this video, but I'm sure it was far too many. If you like what I do here and you want to support the channel, please feel free to subscribe. I have at least one new video every single week. Don't forget to tell your friends, share it on Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you next week.